this whole thing with LGBT is the zenith of man's rebellion against God. Mm. 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 The creator who created us in his own image, we're saying no, we will decide, not biology, not science, we will decide what our gender is. Mm. This is the zenith of rebellion against God. Mm. The absolute rebellion against God, the pinnacle, the peak, the worst thing ever to rebel against God is LGBTQ plus folks, huh? Let's get into that, shall we? This is Rebel HQ. I'm Sandy Lovas. So the atrocities committed in God's name, like the Inquisition, the Salem Witch Trials, residential schools, those weren't as bad as someone using the free will God gave them to express their gender and sexuality, which God also gave them. We're all made in God's image, so one would hazard to guess that being LGBTQ plus would mean we're all part of God's plan. But these two straight cis white men know God's plan better than others. Why? What gives them the authority to speak on his behalf? Oh, <laughs> right. The straight cis white man part. I'm not a godly person. I don't believe in a god or gods. I believe in science and biology, things which are tangible, provable. I'm also good at observation, and something I've picked up on with religious folks is how they choose to interpret the Bible. Some people use the teachings as a guide to their morality, something they can go back to in times of inner conflict. Nothing wrong with that. There's lots of good religious folks out there. However, some people already have morals that are hateful, bigoted, exclusionary, and they pick and choose parts of the Bible and interpret it in ways to justify their horrible behavior. It can't be their fault when a higher power says it's okay. And to men like these two, the zenith of rebellion against God are people who don't conform to the hierarchy they're comfortable with. Because without this imposed hierarchy, they're nobodies. They demand people fit certain roles because it's how they maintain the power and supremacy they enjoy. And they're talking about the United States of America. Talking about the United States of America, because when Matthew mentioned it in the Bible, he wasn't talking about the physical ground that he was on. He was talking about something in the distance. So if we are going to have one nation under God, which we must, we have to have one religion, one one. One nation under God and one religion under God, right? All of us together, working together. We've known for a while that Michael Flynn has destroyed any semblance of credibility and respect with his associations with Trump and QAnon. But it's still shocking that this man was once a national security advisor to the United States. Okay, the ground underneath us is shaking. And it's shaking because, you know, I mean, there is a time, and you have to believe this, that God Almighty is, like, involved in this country because this is it. This is it. This is the last place on earth. This is, this, is the, this is the shining city on the hill. This is the city on the hill. The city on the hill. The city on the hill. I'm Caroline Johnson. Thanks for watching. Flynn just used his platform to call for the U.S. to practice one Christian faith. This is a shocking, inappropriate, revolting, and frankly, ignorant analysis. Beyond the threats to freedom of religion, Flynn is clearly displaying a fundamental lack of understanding about the history of Christianity itself and the scores of denominations within it caused by centuries-long disagreements. Christian denominations are notorious for having very slightly different approaches to one faith. Faith, that have caused rifts hundreds of years long, grudges and disagreements within Christianity are some of the most intense and long-lasting in human history. As Jennifer Martin pointed out on Twitter, quote, the one Christian religion rhetoric is always the funniest because not only do we have Protestants and Catholics, but there are entire denominations where splits happen because two brothers got in a fight over finances or something. If Flynn thinks he can sort out those differences, I for one would love to see him try. And all of this doesn't even touch on the fact that we all know how the right would react if anyone of the Muslim or Jewish faith said something like this. Even certain Christian denominations like Mormonism are held in skeptical regard within the Republican religious right. Religious freedom is obviously enshrined in the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which says, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Flynn is outright demonizing other faiths, which many 
say is in direct contrast to the ideals of inclusion and diversity the U.S. prides itself on. But we also have to remember the truth of the founding of this nation as it relates to religious freedom. The Puritans who arrived on the Mayflower didn't come to the U.S. to build a utopia in which all could practice their religion in harmony. In fact, the biggest motivating factor for them was that in England and Holland, where they originated, they felt as if the Christian faith was not practiced strictly enough. They wanted freedom for themselves to practice their specific brand of Christianity with as much rigidity, structure, and dogma as possible, and had absolutely no interest in having that freedom apply to others. Reports say that Flynn made this statement in response to QAnon claims that he worships Satan, which is wild, but the fact that he takes those claims seriously and wants to rebuild his trust among the QAnon community is downright scary. Famed Watergate journalist Carl Bernstein on Sunday blasted the former national security advisor by saying, quote, it's so stupefying to think that we had a president of the United States that would entertain these knaves, fools, and dangerous authoritarian figures. Bernstein went on, that's what we need to look at in the big picture. Donald Trump looked for people to facilitate his authoritarian impulse. Thanks so much for watching. You can follow me on all platforms at Caro Johnson 917.